guys, welcome back to another one of our videos. In this video, we are going to be looking at how to use Fit IQ the whole entire like we're gonna be doing this whole entire course and also we're gonna be probably doing the other course too in this video, but I don't know. I have four hours left on here, so yeah. Introduction. Try out everything with that. Now today is not about theory, it's not about making good thumbnails, because we know all of that, and if you missed out on any of that information on the VidIQ channel, which you just subscribed to if you haven't already, we have so much value, so many videos about those particular topics, you can go and consume them at your own time. But today it's not about that, today it's about the practical steps. You know, the thing at VidIQ is a lot of us have our own channels, we're all creators, and therefore we understand the frustrations that you go through as a creator. We've all been there. We all know the frustration of filming a video, spending time editing it, uploading it, and then uh, nothing happens or a handful of views. Ridiculously frustrating and almost like demoralizing. Do I really want to do this YouTube thing? So that is what today's training is all about, the practical steps. Now, if you don't have that IQ, that's perfectly fine. You can still hang out with us, no problem. If you are here as a way of saying thank you, in the description below, there's a link to the vidIQ tools. Go and download them, and then for the next 30 days, you will just unlock all the beautiful goodness that's in your channel. And believe it or not, there is goodness. I'm going to show you how to tap into that. And that's what these tools are about. They're about unlocking that frustration, unlocking the goodness that you have, unlocking the way forward. How do you build your channel? How do you grow? How do you get your audience? And this is what I'm going to show you today. So YouTube is made up of three Ds. And when you can unlock all three of those, that is when magic happens. That is when your channel really blows up happened to me I can tell you from first-hand experience on my channel so this is critical critical stuff and that's why I want to share this with you very excited to do this so the first thing is all about this discovery if YouTube doesn't know about your latest creation it could be absolutely mind-blowingly amazing well it's not going to discover it and therefore it's people are not going to know about it therefore people are not going to find it and therefore it's going to remain with very very little views and again we're going to go deep into all of this the first thing is about discovery. The second is yeah, about delivery. Are you as a content creator delivering value to your audience? YouTube looks at that. So what I mean by that is, are you using clickbait to get people just to click and then they don't like it and they leave? Hi, are people Dolphy. loving your content so they're watching so much more of us and they're commenting and giving you those thumbs up? That's important. And that's the second D. It's about delivery. And then finally, the third D is about distribution. When you get those first two rides, YouTube looks at those signals and says, okay, got a video here, it's being loved by it's all an audience, let me go and distribute this to a bigger audience. Let me go find a new audience for this video. Oh, and when that happens, that is when you get those fresh new eyes on those videos, and that is when your subscribers grow, and that is when your views grow. Okay, so where do all good YouTube videos begin? They begin in the kitchen. Of course, that's where all good YouTube videos begin, right? If I tell you right now, stop what you're doing, go to your kitchen, go to open up some random cupboards, take up some random ingredients, mix them all together, and then stick it in your oven, what are the odds that a beautiful pizza is going to come out of that? Mm, probably not much, right? But if I tell you, hold on, don't grab random ingredients, 
I need you to grab the following. There's some tomato sauce, there is some flour, there is some eggs, there is cheese, there is olives, there is whatever. And I give you the steps and I tell you this is, these are the steps to get the dough going. And then you get the sauce and then you get the cheese on top and then stick it in the oven for this temperature, for this long. Then what are the odds of a beautiful pizza coming out? Beautiful and amazing. The way we all approach our videos is Hi. the first bit. We take our camera, we run out, we shoot hours and hours of video, we come home, we drop it onto our computers, we edit it, we copy and move scenes around, we add B-roll, it looks amazing, we slap a title, slap a thumbnail, upload it, and then uh, hope that something comes out of it. Hope that a beautiful pizza comes out of that and people love it. Uh, that's not going to work, is it? But to, that's why I want to focus today on the exact steps that you need to take to follow the recipe. Follow the YouTube recipe. Like we did with our pizza, I want to do, give you the exact those steps that you need to do for your next video. Okay, so now that we have pizza in mind, and a lot of us are going to get hungry round about now, well, that's good motivation to go, go through this training with me. So you ready for this? Let's start off with making a video pizza. We're gonna make a video about pizza. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my search bar. This is where I start. I start by putting in my word or my phrase. And the first thing I wanna understand is the landscape. Now remember we're using pizza here. Of course, this will work for absolutely anything else. I just wanna show you an example. We all understand because well, you get this basically around the world. So let's have a look at this. So pizza is my key phrase. I'm gonna make a video about pizza. I'm not really sure what yet, but I know that that's what I wanna focus on. So VidIQ reveals a whole bunch of information. Highest view video, 28 million. Okay, that looks good. Top creator is a channel called Tasty. Okay, interesting. But look at this, volume. The volume here is 82, it's in the green. What does that mean? It means there's lots of people who are actually searching for our particular key phrase, our pizza key phrase. Do you go out and make a video immediately? No, because you gotta look at competition. And you can see the competition is very high. What does that mean? Lots of people are searching for pizza related content, but there's also lots of channels, lots of videos delivering. So therefore, it's gonna be very, very difficult to make a video just about pizza. So do we just give up? No. Here is where this tip comes into play. Now, this is important. This actually will change your research. We're going to do this. We're going to go out here to our search bar. And what we're going to do is the alphabet walkthrough. So, pizza space A, B, C, D. What is it showing you? It's showing me autocomplete. In other words, so many people have searched for the word pizza and dough recipe that YouTube makes it a little bit easier for the next person to start typing pizza space D. We assume they're going to go for this dough recipe. Oh look, there it is. Dough without yeast. Pizza dough recipe without yeast. How does this help us? How does this help us as content creators? Well, this is a good indication of what people are searching for. If people are searching for pizza dough recipe without yeast, that gives us a beautiful direction for our video. We're going to make a video about pizza dough, and we're going to use the word dough, recipe, and yeast, because those seem to be the popular words. Remember, we're only on the D. E, F, G. Look how many titles come up here that you can actually use for your video. This is where you start really understanding YouTube search. So, remember, YouTube is a search engine. What do you do in search engines? You ask questions. So, don't forget, don't just do the A... B, C, D, walk through. Go to the beginning of the phrase and then type in the what. looks like around the world what's pizza to your body what pizza is the best what where when why how okay and all of a 
sudden look at this how pizza hut makes pizza how pizza rolls are made how pizza is made in dominoes what does this show you it's telling you what people are currently searching for go and make your videos based on these that's how you get those initial eyeballs those initial reactions because you're answering somebody's question autocomplete is a beautiful way to understand the youtube algorithm and currently searching for if you can marry up a video title to a query that is where you win remember we still in reason that's in motion It says the best homemade pizza you'll ever eat views 19 million views on this so <laughs> by most indication 19 million views is a good views for your video I mean we all would love 19 million views on our video but does that mean that this channel is winning in other words is this a good video for this channel because remember this channel's got 18 million subscribers so is 19 million views like uh, a regular video for them or is it a real video for them well, let's find out. So, 19 million views. Here is what the problem with views is. Views doesn't take time into account. In other words, this video was launched in 2018. Did it get a all of its views right at the beginning? Or did it take years to get to these numbers? Did it take a day, a month, a week, a year, three years? How many years did it take to get to this 19 million? Why is that important? Because it told me about relevancy is this video relevant today so for example the iphone one or the samsung note one phone that came out now, i'm a tech geek so i'm going to use technology examples but let's just say that video came out of the iphone one when it came out millions of views on those videos but is it still relevant today that's the question how many people are still searching today if all you saw was that this video has got 19 million views and you went ahead and made a video all around this topic, well, you're going to be missing the boat here because this might not be relevant today. So what do we do? We'll show you something called VPH, views per hour. And essentially what views per hour is, it's telling me right now how many people are watching this video. So as you can clearly see, there is still oh lots and lots God. and lots of interest in this particular video, in this particular title. And in fact, if you look at historical trends, you can see it was doing okay, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, a big, big search. It's obviously the times that we're in, people are interested in making homemade pizza, and therefore this video is getting all that beautiful momentum. So remember, evergreen content, this is another example of something that was live in 2018. And look, it just picked, was okay, okay, and now it just picked up traction. So very important to remember the evergreen content. So when you launch a video, don't panic straight away if it doesn't get those beautiful views. You just never know when your time will come. This is two years later, and look at those numbers. Beautiful, just popping. So, again, a total number of views doesn't indicate if it's a good video today. So we show you views per hour. Very, very important. The next thing we look at is, did they use any Reddit? So there's a couple of Reddit instructions, a little bit of Facebook going on here. But look at this. This is beautiful. This tells me that, remember I asked you earlier, 19 million views on a channel with 18 million subscribers. Is this okay or not? Is this a great video or a bad video? Well, we'll tell you that. The compare views in the first 28 hour days tools is exactly the tool that you need. Because if you have a look at this, you say, this video, I want to compare it to this channel's average. This channel's average is a little pink at the bottom. This video is the one in blue. After one day, two days, three days, seven days. So now we can see. After seven days, this channel typically gets 122,000 to 194,000 views on a video. 
but this video got a 2.6 million views in the first seven days. What does this tell me? It's tell me this is an outlier video. This is an exceptional, exceptional video. And therefore, I am absolutely gonna research this video, the title, the thumbnail, the description, the tag that they use, look what it's ranking for. I wanna understand all of this so that I can make my video as close to this as possible. If YouTube is currently suggesting this video, and it's an outlier video for this channel, well, I am one to, to be able to get in on that. Now, this video tells you more. This, sorry, this tool tells you more. Not just this channel's average, you can actually look at your channel's average. So this video compared to your own channel's average. This video compared to the last video you watched. Any video, any playlist, any channel, and then the competitor's average. And I'll show you that shortly as well. So, very, 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 very powerful tool. It tells you exactly what you need to know this is a good video lots of views per hour trending topic still relevant today i am absolutely going to investigate this if i was making a pizza video still in the first D, that first D of being discovered. So when we have some title ideas, what about thumbnails? What should we be going after? Well, in research mode, we still want to be discovered. We go to the vidIQ tools on the left-hand side, and there's something called competitors. Click on that, and this essentially loads up all the people who are doing similar stuff to you in your industry. This, for us, this is the people that we work with, people that we attend events with, other YouTube teachers here, and we want to understand what's going on. Now, why is it important? Because YouTube knows that we don't watch one video about one item and then go make a buying decision. We watch multiple videos about the same item. Therefore, what we want to understand is what's going on in the industry. What are our competitors doing? Remember, this is sorted by views per hour. So I can see which topic is getting more attention. I want to see what their thumbnails are like. Are they still good lots of text still faces um what's their titles are they long titles are they short titles this all this gives me good indication am i still on the right track now remember in your industry it's going to be different people you have to load up the, yourself the people that you look up to people you want to work with and when you see it you start getting a good picture and a good idea now I'll tell you what else it does youtube is all about trends youtube knows that when a trend comes out, it becomes a hot topic, people are talking about it, people are researching it, and therefore it's gonna serve more and more content. So imagine in this industry, we saw that everybody's talking about a specific topic, a specific YouTube tool, maybe something new has come out, and our competitors have started talking about that. Well, of course, we're gonna understand that, we wanna get in on that action as well. In your industry, it's gonna be exactly the same. Maybe everybody is starting to talk about the upcoming big vacation or the upcoming big holiday in your country maybe it's mother's day whatever it may be if people are starting to talk about it, it means the industry is starting to talk about that particular holiday in other words search results are coming in in other words you can start jumping on this so it's a good way to keep an eye on the competitors keep an eye on what they're doing what are they saying what are they what do they look like and is there anything that you need to change don't go and copy them, because obviously that's not a good strategy, but go and understand what's going on. Know your competitive landscape. Very, very important. So that is competitors. Go and line up a whole bunch, and the value here is insane. views per hour remember per hour not in total 
When that video gets more than a thousand views per hour, each week send me a report that looks like this. Now, why is this important and how does this change channels? Well, what will end up happening is you'll see that a certain style of... Here, do that, but react to the videos that it gives you. So yeah. A video has gone from 1,000 views per hour to 5,000 views per hour to 10,000 views per hour. Okay, something is happening. Something's happening over there. I need to understand that. Because it's going to be your keyword, so it's going to be related to your industry, you know what those big keywords are. And as soon as you see them, you know that you want to jump in on that action and get in on the trend really, really, really early on. So many channels have changed completely because they realized that a certain keyword has become hot, it's just starting to roll. They've seen channels go from 500 views per hour on a video to 1,000 views per hour on a video to 5,000 views per hour on a video. Well, means there's a big hunger for that keyword. Could I make a video with that keyword? Could I make on that topic? And if you can, you can jump in on those trends really, really, really early on. Thing for me 
when it comes to YouTube is the thumbnail and the title in combination. Not in isolation, but together. Why? Well, here's what happens. When somebody's doing a search on YouTube, they perhaps will scroll down and your thumbnail has one mission, to get them to stop and go, oh, what's that? And then they glance over and they look at your title. And together, they're either gonna decide to click or not to click. A great thumbnail with a rubbish title is not enticing enough, and vice versa. An amazing title, but with a thumbnail that doesn't get somebody's attention, also not good enough. They're not gonna stop and click, but it's gotta work together. So this is one of the greatest tools. I love this completely. It's called Preview in Search Results. This is brand new, and this is, uh, this will be a game changer as well. So what do we do? We wanna understand how my video look like when other people are doing a search so let's just say the question is how to get a thousand subscribers so let's write that in how to get a thousand subscribers and I'm going to say preview and search now look what's going to happen we're going to come up here this is the video and this shows me the videos other videos in this industry now we're very lucky because our next video is actually a vidIQ video so I am asking myself the question, will this thumbnail get people to stop and click compared to the other videos around it? That is beautiful. Also, I get to see everybody else's title. I can make changes right here. And not only can I make changes to the title, I can click on preview changes, and it will actually change it right here as well. So now I can constantly am optimizing my video to be discovered. So remember I said, it's your thumbnail and your title in combination because that's going to get someone to stop what they're doing like this and go, oh, what's this? That is colorful. That's got text, got information. I want to click on that. Now remember, it shows it to me on the search screen. But we all know that home screen is pretty big on YouTube too. That's where a lot of people are finding their information. So now it shows me, look what my icon looks like, my graphics look like on the home screen. Look how it just stands out all the colors and that's why people click on this video and again i can see this on desktop i can see this in tablet mode and i can see it on mobile as well i want to make sure i'm continuously continuously optimizing my search results because this is where you win it's in about understanding what your thumbnail and your title look like together compared to the people above you and the people below you because as soon as you can get someone's attention with an amazing thumbnail and a great title, this is where you win the click. I love those preview results. Go ahead and use them continuously. You can search for any phrases. We can optimize it here. How to get 100 subs. Let's just say that's those get the results there. Okay, uh, now you can see we're very similar to this. So if I was going after the first 100 subs, I will perhaps not use the same the same thumbnail because it's too similar to this. I would you oh. <laughs> Another for that key one. See how different that is? And that's what you want. How to stop somebody's attention to be able to go, wow, what is this click? Now, remember that YouTube knows what your video is about. It's got enough AI systems to understand the content. It's automatically captioning your videos. So it's got all this data. So title and description and your tags simply augment what YouTube already knows make sure that it's allocated it correctly. So we always want to write for humans. Don't try keyword stuff this with lots of keywords just to try and get YouTube algorithm to jump around. That used to work back in the day. It does not work anymore because YouTube's smarter than that. So write for people. Write in a way that somebody will want to click. Your description. Put some effort into your description. So give a great opening line because that's the preview line that people will see. And then now, timestamps. Make sure you spend time putting in timestamps. YouTube is experimenting with new features, these things like um, chapters. We're gonna see more and more of this coming to play, especially as we go to more towards voice. So make sure that you put in timestamps into your videos, helping YouTube help you. So when someone on Google does a quick search of how to double down on quality or quantity, well, maybe this is a good enough phrase that YouTube will recommend this video. 
So you need to spend time and effort in here. So, uh, which keywords do you use? Well, this is where tags come in. So whilst tags aren't as important as they used to be, you absolutely still need to be using tags. So you start typing here, Mother's, uh, Mother's Day. And here you can already see a whole bunch of Mother's Day related tags that pop in here. So let's select this one. But watch this. Okay. Click into here. Now we've got a whole wealth of information. Now what we can see here is Mother's Day gift ideas. But look at this. We also show you... Oh, God. One hundred forty nine, seven nine, and one. you the related keywords we show you the most used keywords the search volume the competition the overall score and all of these are basically searchable and indexable so that you can go through and say well which tags do I want to use Mother's Day gift looks like a good one simply add, click on the plus button and it will add that tag all of this information simply helps your video to get better classification and even though tags by themselves don't matter when you feed the beast, it helps you with your video. So many people are just ignoring tags altogether, and that is a big, big mistake. It's all about building those. Yeah, that's one thing. That's why you see, like, hashtags in my title. So, whether right I'm planning on having this title as how to use FitIQ, then I would use hashtag FitIQ because it really says, in the title, how to use vidIQ. Then I would use the hashtag vidIQ and also my normal hashtags. Hashtag vlog. You want a couple pieces of bacon. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Those hashtag relationships your videos and other videos, other search results and tags help you do that. about your video, it knows the content, it knows what your, what your title is, it knows what your thumbnails like, what it doesn't know, if it's a good or a bad video, it has no idea. That's why it has a like and dislike system. <coughs> so it looks for signals, and one of those signals is, do people watch when you make it public? So the best way to know that is to launch your video during a time when people are actually online. So this tool tells you that, best time to publish. So basically for me, I'll show you what I would do. So basically, if you have like, like I do, if you have one for one point seven thousand people that had actually like watched your view for your channel. Let me go to it if I can find it. Audience. Now I can't find it. Oh. Wait, what? But basically, I would personally like check on uh, 
when my views are like online well once they like viewed my YouTube views so yeah broken down by day and it knows if I'm gonna launch a video on a Wednesday my no, audience yeah, yeah. happens to be online between these times so I should probably launch my video just before that just to get all that upwards traffic as people are joining this is an important signal if you make your video available and people are watching it instantly YouTube says oh there must be value here because people are watching and they're watching for more than 50% so I want to be able to translate that into maybe trying with another audience and that's where distribution starts to happen because YouTube is getting all these glorious signals to say that this is a good quality video and that is how you unlock distribution so launch your video when your public is online and a good ninja tip here is try not to launch whenever you can schedule a video what I mean by that is you can schedule a video to launch on the hour or every half an hour or even every 15 minutes so 9, 9.15, 9.30, for example. But if you launch your video at 9.48, it's such a weird time that no other companies schedule their videos to launch at that because you can't. So now you have an opportunity to stand out amongst those notifications. Less notifications, more odds. The odds are much better that your subscriber actually gets the notification. So there's a little bonus tip there. As we scroll further down, a lot of VidIQ um, SEO scores that are right here. We've even got the check the checklist. Let me make sure that I've done everything. Have I got a card? Have I got an end screen? Yeah. We don't enable monetization, so I'm obviously going to see the X. Have I shared it to you on Twitter, made it public, etc. So we're just keeping you on track. A nice little running track to make sure that you're ticking all the right boxes and ticking all the right marks here. Yeah. Let's test my god. It's B. No. I'm just going to choose it. Oh. What happened here? See you there. Wait a second. Wait a second. Definitely bad. Well, for me, if I schedule, ever schedule, like, a video, it would probably be, I uh, like, <clears throat> like, 10, 40, or whatever, like, hour, then, like, 40, or, like, let's say just 42, 10, 42. Continue. Research, we're gonna get discovered. We've done the first D. The second D is that we have now launched our video, we've launched at the right time, and now we hope it's up to YouTube to distribute that video as much as possible. We're obviously gonna help it along with social media and our own efforts to get the video seen, but we're hoping the YouTube algorithm kicks in. Well, YouTube rewards people that deliver. So it's quality over quantity. How do we know if you're delivering? Well, this is where this tool comes in. It's called the Channel Audit Tool. Now, this is the tool I was missing when I was building up my YouTube channel because I needed something that I can push a button that will tell me what's working and what isn't working. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend 10 hours of my day trying to decipher little numbers and exporting reports from YouTube Analytics to try to work out what's working and what isn't. I want to push a button, and this is what this does. The channel audit 
does exactly that. It says, okay, over the last 30 days, is my channel growing or shrinking? So I can see views, subscribers, watch time. If it's going up, great. If it's going down, why? Did maybe I have a viral video last month and I not, don't have one this month? Okay, so I understand. So it gives me that information. The next thing I wanna look at is content to double down on. And essentially what that means, this is content that you need to make more of. People love this content. It's broken down into views per hour. Which videos are giving me views per hour? How many views per hour does each one of these videos give me? What's the engagement rate? What's the views? Subscribers gain. How many subscribers per a thousand views? So it gives me an idea of what's bringing in my subscribers to my channel. And now I know that if people are loving this content, uh, make more of this content. Simple as that. And down here, total watch time, average watch time, top retention. These are the stuff that YouTube loves. And YouTube rewards you for it. So if you can mix these together, find the trend on your channel and see what works and make more of that. You'll very quickly discover these certain elements of that your channel that people love and these certain channel stuff that they don't love. So for example, in our how to make the best pizza recipes, maybe you're gonna make five different pizza recipes and every time you use the word pepperoni, it doesn't rank up here. Because you know what? People didn't love that. Where do you see it? in the content that could use work. This is the stuff that didn't really work too well. Well, why not? Lowest average watch time, lowest retention, lowest like ratio, lowest views, videos losing sub. What does that mean? Well, people didn't really engage with our content. Why not? Do we just not make it? No, we go and we understand why did these things not work? What's going on here? Could we do something better to improve it? So things are always gonna be up here. So pepperoni lands up down here. Don't make pepperoni recipes. Only make the stuff that works up here. Now another section in the middle is called the top search term. What are people searching to get to your channel, to get the information? What are the click rates for your end screen? The card click rates. What does this all this tell you? Well. These are the search terms. So if I make more videos with these search terms, guess what? More views, more subscribers. And I can't believe I already feel like for like 40 minutes, I think. Pretty much like 40 minutes. End screens. You can see how when I'm referring to certain elements in my end screens, they're working better than other end screens. The call to subscribe on our end screen isn't really working. We're not getting much out of this. But best for viewers seems to be doing a lot better channel seems to be doing a lot better on your cards polls look at this 71 percent of people are engaging in polls we're going to make more polls playlist is doing okay not so bad but not as good as polls so we're going to use more polls in our videos so you see how all this information really helps you understand the second d are you delivering because when you deliver that is when distribution happens and remember this is for 30 days we could even drop it down to 60 and 90 days. I always look at this on my personal channel between 30 days, and then I look at it at 90 days. I want to smooth out any highs, smooth out any lows, and just get an idea of what's actually working. So I look at my content to double down on, look for those trends, what are the search terms, and what didn't work so well. Down here, oh, I see a little bit of information. I'm using a lot of characters, but look down here, items to improve upon. Here it says to me, okay, there's videos without cards. Uh oh. 12 videos don't have an end screen, and six videos are not added to a playlist. I can go into each one of these and instantly fix it straight from here. So it always keeps a good housekeeping in check. The channel order tool is your, the, it's almost your savior. It's the best thing that you need for your channel because it's the unemotional version that tells you what's working and what isn't working. think oh what does every channel audit tool in one
So now, we have done the first D. We have been discovered. We have done the second D. We are delivering. We're spending lots and lots of time in our channel or the tool to understand what's working and what isn't working. And we're constantly giving our audience the stuff that's working. They're loving it. They're giving us subscribers and they're giving us views. That is what it's all about. And when you do that well enough, once you spend a lot of time doing this, you're going to go into your achievements and you're going to start unlocking achievements. We've unlocked a 500,000 subscriber achievement. And don't worry, this is customized for your channel. So if you haven't hit a certain achievement, don't think you have to wait till 500,000. But now why this is important? Because when you unlock an achievement, it generates a certificate. And this certificate is a great way to help build your audience. Here is why. When you have an achievement and you share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, wherever you share it, people are going to say, wow, I'm part of this journey. Your audience is part of that journey. They love being part of people's journey. They retweet. They like. They you know, give you a shout out for being successful. Well done. And that grows your community because other people see this and go, oh, I don't know about this Vidak key channel. Let me go check it out. There must be lots of value. This is social proof that everything works and has come together beautifully for you. So spend some time in your achievement. Understand what you're breaking into. Share those certificates. Be excited about it. And then look at your top performing months. What are your targets? Use that as a bit of a motivational thing. Can I reach my goals? How many more days am I away from reaching my next milestones? We take care of all that for you so that you are proud to share your successes. And when you do, make sure you tag vidIQ on your social media so we're happy to retweet we're happy to celebrate in your success and your milestones video and final stretch until this course is 100 so there was a lot of information done. coming at you fast and furious the cool thing is you can always go back and simply rewatch any of the modules that you need any extra help with because youtube is a process at the end of the day there isn't any hack, <coughs> there isn't any quick method there isn't sub for sub there is none of that it's all about doing the right work what we do at vidIQ is we make it simpler for you to work smart not to work hard by focusing on the things that are working versus focusing on random items that aren't working. We want you to succeed. We want you to be discovered. That, that first D. We want to make sure that you're delivering. Come on. I just want to finish this course. We can help you with that and therefore YouTube will unlock that distribution and it's going to get your videos out there in, into the wild. We're going to watch your channel grow. We're going to ce celebrate in your milestone, celebrate in your success, and we cannot wait to see you grow. Thanks for hanging out. So that's part one to this VIQ thing and bye bye.